Okay, Mike has a question. Um, had a question about training frequency. I am 52 years old, 5'8", 167, and I'm trying to build, maintain muscle and overall health and longevity. I am currently using the workout generator. Okay, for those who don't know, danjohn. Uh, pardon me, uh, danjohnuniversity.com. We have, uh, when you sign up, we have a thing called the workout generator. You put what equipment you have. You, you basically answer two, three questions about number of times a week and duration and intensity. And then this thing just spits out uh, really good programs, mixing uh, push-pull, hinge squat, loaded carry with original st strength movements and mobility movements. And you can you can raise and lower uh, the exercises anytime you want. Uh, I've when I did use it for a while, I found myself. Uh, you know, there, there'd be days, like, don't you know who I am? I'm a front squat. And the next day, come in and go, don't you know who I am? I'm going to do a suspension trainer squat. So, and that's fine. You know, sometimes you're, you're doing three sets of 12 in a double kettlebell front squat. And some days you're doing three sets of 12 in the uh, suspension trainer squat. Okay. Um, and really enjoying lifting six days a week, Mike tells us. I know the importance of recovery, and lately I've tried to space out the workouts so there is a recovery day in between weight training workouts. But my problem is that I prefer that tight feeling that I get after I complete a weight training workout, so I always drift back to train with weights six days a week. At my age, am I just spinning my wheels? No. And preventing any gains in strength and muscular development by training so frequently. Would there be any value in utilizing some kettlebells during the training week to break things up, or should I force myself to adhere to a day off between workouts? You know, okay, should you work out every day? Yes, yes, you should. <laughs> should, <laughs> should you go for the world record every day in training? No, probably not. A um, couple things, uh, and let me spitball a few ideas back to back to back for you. First off, I always liked something I learned from a, a Bulgarian coach when he corrected me and he said, no, no, we don't lift to our max, our lifetime max every day. We lift to our training max every day. And I thought, oh boy, did I misunderstand everything you guys have been talking about. And it really opened some doors for me. So Mike, if you're doing this, if three days a week you're doing um, front squats, or just since we were talking about, and the other three days a week you're doing the goblet squat, the suspension trainer squat, some other kind of variation and, and even some of the lunge family there. Um, what you, what you, I, I would use if I were you those three hard workouts, that's just the Monday, Wednesday, Friday workout. I would use those workouts to that. Those would be the ones I would actively try to and to use your words, get your gains and strength and muscular development, train those three days. The other three days, I would go in and maybe even stick with the same rep and set screen, but just, you know, when you go on the workout generator, you can scroll down the exercises, scroll down each of those major exercises into something that will allow you to do it an enhanced recovery. Now, this is a concept, this is a concept everybody knows at some level, but I really did learn it from Dick Notmeyer the best. If you were sore from snatches and cleaning jerks on Monday, when you came in Tuesday to lift, we started with front squats. Those first six, seven, eight sets, and we did a lot of sets, um, a lot of them would kind of undo the tightness, the soreness, that, uh, that weird locked up feeling you get when you're sore from the Olympic lifts, oh, like the traps and the mid back and the, uh, the, it can be the hamstrings, the glutes and whatever these muscles are, my God. Um, but after a couple sets of front squats, I had greased myself up. I had lubricated my joints. I felt good and I could press on. Of course, <laughs> show up Wednesday, I'd be sore from Monday and Tuesday. And of course we would repeat snatch and clean and jerk. We took Thursdays off and then Friday snatch, clean, jerk, and Saturday uh, the, the front squats and the jerks. It was a great program. And so maybe I don't want you to go as heavy as I did when I was 17, 18, 19, because you could recover back then. But the idea of doing the movements, so three hard days a week with the workout generator, and then three days where you 
lighten up on the movements and get that feeling of just kind of feeling good. Ties us right back to that body weight training question because sometimes those movements are like almost just body weight training exercises. Should you weight lift every day? I, I think you can, and, I, and you don't even need to split it up. I think you can do whole body workouts every day, but you have to have the idea um, very much like that Hungarian training programs from the late 60s and early 70s where Olympic lifters would go, you know, heavy three days a week in the gym and then the next day come back and repeat the same workouts with just 60% of the weight they did the day before so you could practice your technique and the movements and you're, you're trying to lay on, you're trying to tell your nervous system, this is what I want, this is what I want, this is what I want. And you repeat those workouts to teach your body to make the lifts and 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 f move better, and move better and ideally, and with your case here, um, you know, look better and all the rest that goes along with that. Um, the movement, the the movement of training every day, um, it, it does hit your recovery properties a lot. But the nice thing is, is that's what you're doing, and over time, your body seems to adapt. I'm guessing, Mike, that you and I might be the kind of people who can train six days a week. And this is something to think about because we do have some of our gentle listeners who might not be able to train heavy six days a week. We might have some people who can only train heavy, heavy, who can't, um, who can train six days a week. We might have some people who can train really hard one day a week and have two check-in workouts, you know, three days a week. Um, the tradition in the weight room up until the mid 60s, 1960s, was you'd have a heavy day, a light day, a medium day, a heavy day, a light day, a medium day, training three days a week. Um, if you studied the the work of Jim Schmitz, the my co my coach when I was young and good looking. Uh, he's the great Olympic lifting coach, Sports Palace, originally San Francisco, now in my hometown, South San Francisco. Um, his programs went heavy, light, heavy, light, heavy, light. Um, and what we're going to do in the program you're doing is what I think you should do is heavy, light, heavy, light, heavy, light in a week and make your light workouts light and make your heavy workouts as heavy as you appropriately can and see if you can uh, have some success doing that. Uh, you, you mentioned adopting kettlebells, and I would certainly, I mean, it uh, depends on what you wanna do with them. If you're just using kettlebells to do the traditional press and front squat and you just stay with the equipment you have. Now, if you wanna swing over into stuff like uh, the kettlebell snacks, the kettlebell swing, and all that other, all the other movements of the kettlebell world. Um, maybe do something along the line of six to twelve weeks of doing the concept we just outlined before, and then taking a taking some time anywhere for three to three to six weeks to explore the kettlebell movements, and then come back to what you're doing. I always think it's a good idea to finish a program, and then when you finish it to go into something that's kind of refreshing uh, physically and mentally. Um, I'm, as I'm talking today, I'm, I'm starting up on, I'm getting ready for an, an Olympic lifting meet. So after a couple of weeks, yeah, almost, almost two full months of basic bodybuilding, I'm back to Olympic lifting. And that really works well for me. And it's, and it's repeatable, doable for me. It's reasonable. And uh, I, I get a lot of benefit out of it. After my meet, the following Monday, I'll go back to a basic bodybuilding program. Um, I think it does help to have that kind of variation over every six to 12 weeks. It could be longer for some people, could be shorter for others. Generally for me, eight to 12 weeks is about, a long, it's about as long as I want to be on a particular program. You know, eight to 12. I like to get things about two full months. But Mike, this is a good question. It's a good question. And the answer is, uh, I would stick with what you're doing. Uh, I like the fact that a 52 year old man is training six days a week. Just remember, if you're gonna have three workouts where you kind of go after it with a traditional lift, have those other three workouts be kind of tonic. I like the idea of doing push, pull, hand, squat, loaded, carry. Every workout, 
just ratchet things down on the loaded carries on your hard days. Maybe you can do farmer walks or pushing the sled. We call them prowlers, but I guess not everyone understands what I'm talking about. And on the other three days a week, you could do the more restorative uh, uh, carries, the rack walk, the waiter walk, and the suitcase carry. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Good question, and thank you very much.